certainly disappointed with the result. Um, I do think there were some positives to take away from the game. Uh, offensively, obviously, I thought Riley played exceptionally well. I thought they had a really talented quarterback. Um, but Riley certainly did his part to try to match it uh, all the way through to the end to the final drive. Uh, I thought we made some plays at wide receiver, continuing to make explosive plays uh, in the passing game is something that we want to continue to do and going to need to continue to do moving forward. Uh, I thought defensively, you know, amidst the day that, that saw a lot of struggles and really didn't see us play our best football to make the stand at the end of the game after the failed onside's kick to give the ball back to the offense to get a chance to score. Uh, and then I thought, you know, we got to mention our kicking game. You know, we certainly had our early struggles, but Porter Wilson did a really nice job punting the ball. Uh, Charlie's been really exceptional kicking off, you know, and then he's made all of his kicks two weeks in a row and so happy for him. And, you know, I think what it came down to really was, you know, we didn't execute well enough uh, as a program, certainly on defense. You know, we've got to communicate better. Uh, we've got to put our kids in better positions to be successful, and then they've got to go out and execute the plan better. Uh, and then offensively, I just thought we had a couple of critical breakdowns. You know, the, the two penalties, you know, the one in the red zone, the one on the fourth and one certainly hurt us. Uh, not converting the fourth and one um, was obviously a big play, and it was going to be a game where we knew we were going to have to try to match score for score, uh, and we weren't able to do it. You know, proud of our fight, proud of how we continue to battle. Um, but like I said, after the game, you know, we're not here for moral victories. And so disappointed that ultimately we didn't get the result we wanted. And, and credit to Kansas. That's a heck of a football team. And they played a really good game. And they certainly beat us. And so on to the next. Obviously now excited for ACC play to start. Uh, have Virginia coming in here this weekend. Um, certainly got a lot of respect for Tony Elliott. Uh, have crossed paths with him a lot over the years. You know, we went uh, out of a six-year stretch. I think I played against him five straight years as a defensive coordinator when he was the OC at Clemson. And so uh, I've gotten to know Tony really well, him and his family over the years. He's a great guy. He's a great coach. Um, so respect for what they're doing. I think when you look at them offensively, uh, I think they're an exceptionally talented offense. I know it hasn't completely clicked for them the way they've wanted it to at this point, but um, they have a lot of weapons. You know, Brendan Armstrong is a really talented quarterback, throws the ball really well, can do things with his feet, a really gritty, tough football player. And so he's a kid that we got to pay a ton of attention to. Um, you know, they'll get Billy Kemp back this year, and he's, he's an exceptional slot in the ACC. Uh, the Dontavious Wicks kid at wide receiver is really talented. Uh, and then Keaton Thomas is having a heck of a year for him. And so they've got skill players, they've got weapons on offense, and, and they certainly have our attention with what they do. And then defensively, I think they're one of the most improved, improved defenses in the country. I think they're doing a really good job with their scheme. I think they know what they want to do. I think they're very comfortable running it. Uh, their kids are playing very fast and very physical. Uh, Chico Bennett up front has been a handful for people. Uh, he's been extremely disruptive. Um, and they've got a, a bunch of big athletic bodies across their front. Um, which will certainly present a challenge to our kids. Nick Jackson, I know he won't play the first half, but is certainly one of the best linebackers, not only in the ACC, but also in the country. You know, and they got a lot of length in the secondary. They're really long and they're really athletic. And so, you know, these guys are extremely talented. Uh, we certainly have their they have our full attention. Uh, we've lost seven straight games to them. And so we know what they're capable of. Uh, and we certainly expect that we're going to get their best on Saturday night. And so from there, I'll kind of open it up to questions. Yeah, so yeah sure. You got two hours? Um, no, no. I mean, yeah, a lot. I mean, I, the, the biggest thing is communication. I think the first thing is, you know, and, and Kansas stresses you. They, they put you in a lot of different sets and they motion a lot. And, and obviously, the quarterback is a run threat, creates even more stress to the whole situation. But we just didn't communicate well enough. So it starts there. I think that was the biggest thing. And then, you know, from a tackling perspective, I just think, you know, the skill level picked up a little bit and, and we've just got to do a better job of trusting our technique. And I think we've got to um, understand when it's okay to strip the football and when it's more important to tackle. That obviously is something that reared its head on the long touchdown run. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I think we've just got to do a better job of wrapping and finishing. And, and I just think, um, they spread you thin, and, and that creates tackling issues. When you play an extremely athletic offense that goes sideline to sideline, it puts your kids in more stress tackling, and obviously we didn't handle it quite the, well, the way we wanted to, but we'll go back to work and we'll get better at it. Yeah, I, I just think we're, we're playing this thing together for the first time, and so every game, 
uh, we're getting put in situations that we haven't seen before as a unit. And so, um, you know, these kids in the secondary, a lot of them are first time starters. Uh, the ones that transferred in that are experienced starters have never started at Duke and have never played with, with the guys they're playing with now. And so I think what he meant by keeping secrets is, is we're not verbalizing with each other. Right? And so if you and I have to get on the same page and I just assume we're on the same page and I don't talk to you, then there's a chance we're not on the same page because you may think one thing and I may think another and we don't get it right. Uh, and I think that was that was probably where the defensive breakdowns came from. I think offensively, I just think, um, you know, there was it was loud. Uh, we knew it was going to be loud. We practiced for it to be loud, but it's the first time our group has played in a loud environment like that. It's the first time we've gone on a road in a really competitive football game in a while with a full stadium that was trying to affect the game. Um, and so that's the first time really that our kids have had to deal with that problem. And so as much as we practiced it, I still think at times we got out there and didn't execute it the way we wanted to. Yeah, probably both parts of that, Connor. I think you're looking schematically, obviously, a little bit more at, at what they've been this year, what Tony's been, what Des Kitchens has been. Um, but I think from a skill standpoint, it's still the same kids, right? So that group that was you know, terrifying the ACC last year, scoring all those points, it's the same group of skill kids. Not many of them have left. And so uh, we certainly have a lot of respect for what they're capable of being. Um, you know, they're not off by much. You still see it on the majority of the plays. I think there's just been a handful of things that have gotten them behind the chains, which is probably why they're not scoring to the degree they want to or the degree they're used to. Um, but they're not far off from getting back to where they've been. No, no, I, I don't. I mean, obviously, we understand the, the value of winning ACC football games. We know how much that means to our program. And certainly from a recruiting standpoint and our fan base and, and all those things, we certainly understand the importance of winning these football games. But at the end of the day, the recipe for success is the same. We've got to go out. We've got to prepare really well. Uh, we've got to trust the process. We've got to put in the work during the week to give ourselves an opportunity. And then we've got to go out and we've got to execute. And, and we've got to be able to execute for a full four quarters. Uh, and I think the only thing that we try to impress on our kids, and it really started last week in the Kansas game, is just when you play teams where the skill level is identical or, or close one way or the other, right, whoever has the upper hand, um, execution is more important, right? And, and that's where the little things that you don't do right uh, can, can cause you more problems than maybe when the talent's a little bit more lopsided in your favor. And so um, that, I think, is the challenge. I think it's the same challenge that presented itself last week, and it'll be the same for the next eight weeks. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we challenge our offensive line every week, but but th and this one's a little bit of a different challenge because these guys are they're physical, but they're really athletic. Like this is an explosive, twitchy, athletic front, and and really, um, Kansas presented a little bit of that to us, but really, um, it's the first time we're going to see that type of front. And so, uh, while it is a challenge similar that our offensive line is certainly going to have to step up and protect Riley, I think the way it presents itself is a little bit different. They blitz a little bit more. They're a little bit more exotic on third down. I think that's where some of the pressures are coming from too and so you know there's different challenges that I think this one presents but certainly um, protecting our quarterback and running the football will always be essential to us being successful yeah I think I think kids who play the game of football have a little bit of an edge about them and, and certainly kids who play quarterback do and, and he's no different um, you know obviously he's he's a great kid he's a well-respected kid in our community he does great in school but when he gets on the football field he's a competitor and no competitor wants to be told where he stacks in that that level, you know what I mean? And so certainly he's got a chip on his shoulders, And but we have a ton of confidence in him. And we have, you know, since we named him the starter and really since he started to elevate himself in fall camp. And so, um, you know, we're really happy with how he's playing. He's doing a really good job for us. Now we just want to see him continue to grow and develop. Our execution has to get better and crisper because every game, the, the degree of difficulty is going to increase on the other side. And so, um, you know, that's really what it's going to come down to. We've got to continue to develop our game so that our best can match the talent as it, you know, increases on the other side of the football. I think that's probably the biggest challenge that we've got to be able to continue to go through. Kansas. Yeah, I think so. We looked at the Kansas game and, and we felt like from an execution standpoint, we, we made a lot of critical mistakes. I, I felt like, um, you know, there were a lot of things that we wish we would have executed a lot better in that game. Um, communication wise, coverage wise, uh, fitting some of the runs early in the game that really got out. I mean, there were a lot of things that we wish we could do better. Then at the end of the game, we had the football with a chance to tie it. 
And I think that is because we won the turnover battle. We won the special teams game changers. We won the fourth quarter. Um, we did some of those critical elements of our plan to win well, um, which is what allowed us to stay in a game that we didn't really play particularly well. You know, when you really break down the film, we just we didn't play as well as we were capable of playing on defense. It's just what it was. And so, um, and that's on everybody. That's, that's not on our kids. That's on our coaches. That's on me. That's on everybody. Um, but at the end of the game, here we are with a chance to win it. And so that's, that's what I think that gives you. Like for 10 months, I've watched the competitive spirit of this team grow. I've watched them compete. I've watched what they've done in workouts. I've watched how they've come together as a group. Uh, I've watched how they've, they've learned how to care about each other. And, and I know how they want to represent Duke. And so uh, a lot of people were very complimentary of the fact that we fought to the end. Um, and obviously, I'm proud of the fact that we fought to the end, but that certainly didn't surprise me. I didn't anticipate it would come out any other way. Um, these kids are very passionate about playing this game at Duke. They're passionate about each other, uh, and they're passionate about representing this program the right way. And so um, at the end of the day, we're always going to fight to the end. That's what the, the mantra of this team will be. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get it done. Yeah, I, I think you have to do both. Obviously, with, with a hurricane, you never know what course it's going to take. And so, you know, as we sit here on Monday, it, it could be dry or it could be a tropical storm. You know, you don't really know exactly what the weather's going to be like Saturday night. Uh, we certainly will take preparations for the worst case scenario. And, and yes, I, wet ball work will be something that gets incorporated into practice this week, making sure that we're able to do that stuff, making sure that we have a plan. Uh, if the weather doesn't allow us to execute offensively the way we're accustomed to to make sure that we know what we want to do and how we want to do it um, so yeah I think you have to take all of those precautions uh, just in case it turns out to be worst case scenario weather wise yeah I mean I think getting out fast is always important I mean certainly it's important in a league game it's important in a home game it's important against Virginia um, and I don't mean to undersell what you're asking but like when you get out fast and you get out in front of people it changes and allows you to dictate the game and, and when you have to play catch up it's harder uh, it puts more pressure on your guys. It puts more stress on your guys. Um, the other team can be more diligent with how they go about their plan. And so, yeah, I, I think we always want to start fast and, and get out in front. And, um, you know, I, I think, you know, not, not counting the drive that started on the one-yard line, I think we're four for four right now on offense, first drive touchdowns. And so um, we've got to continue to do that. That's something that's going to be a recipe for success.